Good morning, folks. Today we're going to see a new space energy measurement available, take a peek at a notable earthquake swarm, and see research on red dwarf super flaring in Greenland's ice history. But we also have space weather, so let's start with the last 24 hours on our star. Much quieter after the two X-class solar flares we showed yesterday. We still have several sunspot groups, but they're morphing reduced magnetic complexity and therefore flaring output over the last day with only minor pops and surges to see. When we look at the sunspots, we can see their immense size and spread across the Earth-facing half of the sun. These active regions are unlikely to remain quiet, and we still have more apparently ready to come over the limb into view. The last day brought only those more minor flaring events and confined umbral jet expulsions. Notable, we also have a few plasma filaments, including that big one on the north. We'll be watching all of it as we enter the second half of the week. Those who check the data sources may have noticed a slight change to the proton flux. They've added the orange line representing 500 MeV protons now. Before, it was only the three lower energy flows. During the biggest space weather events, these most energetic particles can have significant ozone and atmospheric effects. It will be nice to have this when activity spikes again. The second largest earthquake of the last day was the most interesting, a five-pointer in California. When we zoom in, we can see it was the largest of a pretty significant swarm of quakes. Hopefully much of these are aftershocks, but with this much unrest, it is worth monitoring the area moving forward. Good article up next on far ultraviolet profiles of red dwarfs especially during super flares, with new data suggesting they are stronger and more damaging to their local planets than they imagined. Other factors might include the magnetic fields of those planets, but in total, the study paints a less favorable picture for life around the most abundant stars in the galaxy. And lastly, folks, confirmation that Greenland ice not only melted away completely during the recent geologic past, but that it was indeed the entire island. While the paper uses this rapid change fact to offer fear about sea level rise due to melting, it also means that the ice reformed to the tune of two miles thick in much shorter time scales than they had imagined as well, during a period when they used to think it was relatively unchanging. With geologically slow transformation, it melted and reformed entirely. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.